Hello English 112 students. This is our third video and I would like to explain uh, the course goals. I made a list of topics that I will be talking about and I emailed you the script. So I ho hope that um, the video will clarify some of your questions. I made a list at the beginning of the notes of uh, some points that I will try to touch on. Uh, we are working on research skills. This is the third research paper, and so a little bit more detail about how to prepare a research paper. Uh, a little review of paraphrasing. So when students will use quotations in their research paper, uh, sometimes it's boring. And so making the paper sound like your own voice by putting it in your own words and not using all direct quotations is a strategy that students use. So a blend of quotation and paraphrasing is necessary. I did um, put a quiz on paraphrasing in there because the quiz grades looks like uh, we've been skipping too much. So I hope it will not be hard to review paraphrasing and look at the six questions to make up a quiz grade. Um, the fourth point is the review of MLA. And so some students who don't have a book are supposed to be using modern language association style of writing. And so some of my papers are a little bit of a mixture. They are APA and MLA mixed, and so I am trying to distinguish for you the differences between MLA and APA. Um, I did put a quiz on plagiarism in my notes because students might be mortified if they're reported to the dean for having um, information directly from the internet but not cited correctly. And so citations are what protect you from being charged with plagiarism. Uh, I did send students the grammar review test. And so that is the test I give to my English 111 students and my English 112 students so that students will have a chance to identify that type of grammar mistake or sentence structure or punctuation mistake that they make and so if you miss that item on the test, it wouldn't hurt you to review it for 10, 15 minutes so that your future papers would be able to eliminate those mistakes. Um, you don't need to be perfect in grammar, but in the future, if your teacher uh, doesn't see a lot of um, problem with grammar, then it's easier for the teacher to focus on the content of your paper. The content is much more important than grammar, but some people do get distracted when they see too many grammar mistakes in a paper. So it's to your advantage to understand how to correct a type of mistake that you make. Um, I wanted to explain how to prepare the writing portfolio because in the regular classroom I would collect a folder your papers and your corrections of those papers. And I would check it and give you a grade on it and return your folder. So we're not in the classroom. I need to have an alternative to submitting a paper folder, which would be uploading your papers to Canvas under the portfolio button or just emailing your attachments. We had four summary analysis response essays and uh, two essays that I've been returning. And so if you correct those six papers, then that will show me that you took the time to review the mistakes and think about them uh, and how to avoid those mistakes in the future. I wanted to give you an article for the final exam. Uh, typically, my 112 exam is another brief summary analysis response paper. So I gave you a paper which is not really an argument, but it brings up a lot of questions for everyone who is planning their work life. And so 
Uh, it is a former TCC student who worked for 20 years for Harley Davidson and, uh, you know, got a motorcycle as his 20 uh, anniversary prize. So, you know, normally what you used to get was a watch from your company. Now I don't think anybody gets anything. It's so discouraging trying to establish a career. So we look at his success and his decisions, and I would like you to write a brief summary response paper about it to reflect on that student's uh, decisions and what it means to plan a career the way um, our modern life is, what is the best way to find out what you're good at and what we'll be happy doing for a lifetime. So... Uh, I hope it's a good choice for um, a paper topic. I uh, did give you the bonus questions for the exam, and so you can submit those bonus questions. Usually I take the bonus points and I add them in uh, to the course assignments. If you're missing anything, then I try to use that to boost the student's grade in some way. So the bonus questions, you can either do an, a paragraph or a full page essay, something to boost your grade. If you have zero grade, I will try my best to substitute that if it's clear you took the time to prepare that bonus uh, writing a little bit carefully. So the first lesson is paraphrasing. Uh, I found a definition of paraphrasing. I would like to warn students that if material comes from a source, even though you put it in your words, you still need to cite it because they aren't your ideas. They came from someone else. And so the in-text citation is necessary for the um, paraphrasing as well as for the quotations. Uh, we are trying to avoid plagiarism because... If you make a mistake in uh, not citing something, um, you might be referred to the dean, and so that would get you in trouble. So paraphrasing well and citing it is very necessary so that it doesn't look like you took the information and made it yours in your writing assignment. So there is a lesson on paraphrasing. There are some examples of sentences which are paraphrased, and, um, you know, it is a skill which takes a little bit of effort for students um, to, to prepare when they're doing a research paper. I did ask you to do the quiz on paraphrasing, and so there are a few uh, multiple-choice questions, and... There are four multiple choice questions and two sentences I asked you to paraphrase. And it was a University of Michigan source, which was allowed uh, in other teaching materials. Um, I found online a teaching packet for MLA 8. And I think that this is necessary because if you are asked to use MLA 8 in another class, uh, it is better to know a little bit more about it to boost your grade in your writing assignments. So um, I also found an instructional site for in-text citation, and I added a quiz on plagiarism. And so boosting the quiz grades, because we didn't do more than three, um, we weren't in the classroom, and I focused on trying to get the essays completed, and um, we still need to back up and do those quizzes. Okay, so I did send you the grammar test. I will use the grammar test as a quiz grade, so you get 100 for doing it. Uh, once you take the grammar test and you, and you email me what your score was, then I will send you... Um, oh, you can't score it without the answer key. It's foolish. Sorry. So I will send you the answer key, then you can check your answers. The answer key has the name of the type of mistake, which should help you identify what to study. And so um, 
it, you know, English doesn't finish with 112. English is evaluated when you write papers in other classes. Uh, I call my history teachers sometimes English teacher wannabes because they do great on grammar, even though it's a history class. So you want to be um, aware of how to improve in grammar. So I did uh, send you the grammar test. So I would like a little paragraph saying what mistakes did you make and what is your plan for improving in grammar and uh, punctuation and sentence structure. I uh, did briefly already explain the writing portfolio. Uh, you probably don't have time to get your research paper three back and make corrections. Everybody's running out of energy. It's a lot of work to be a student, so um, we won't do corrections on essay three. There's just no time. So you have six papers which you can either email me or put on Canvas under portfolio so that I can assign you a grade. I would know that you took the time to look at my notes and make corrections. All right, so the final exam, I did give you the internet link, uh, the title of the article, um, Bayside Harley. Davidson employee is bestowed a brand new ride for 20 years of service. And so um, I hope that you will like the article and find enough to write about. Um, try to give you a list of questions to think about in your uh, response to that. So you write a summary and, and a response, which is your final exam. It's a brief paper, just like the first four that we wrote. And I did send the um, bonus questions, which you can use for any weak spots in your grade. I tried to make a works cited page with the sources, because if I don't use citations, then students might not think they're important. So I tried to uh, prepare my citations for the sites, not just use the URL because the URL is not enough information to cite a source. There's a lot more that goes into identifying where the information came from. So thank you for your patience and I uh, hope that you're not stressed. I know that it's very difficult to be a student in these times. I would like you to finish English 112 successfully. Um, I haven't been notified which student wants to get a letter grade or which student wants P plus or P minus, but please review your options once you make the selection, whether you want a letter grade or whether you want a P plus, P minus, or, or W, then, uh, you know, if you have any questions, then the administrators can answer them, or I can also uh, answer your questions about it. But I want you to be moving on and completing your requirement for English 111 and 112. Um, I hope that it hasn't been a disaster. It is very difficult, I know, from your emails. So take care. Thank you for listening, and I will be checking your email. Do have assignments. I'm not skipping you on purpose. I'm just a little bit overwhelmed, the same as the way students are. So I will catch up every day, grading papers, checking email. Um, that is just my um, fate, our fate in this time. So take care. I'll talk to you later.